Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Maker and today I'm teaching you all about the tools, supplies, and accessories that you can use with your Cricut Joy cutting machine. This is the Cricut Kickoff Lesson 2 and we're going to go through all of these fun things together one by one so that you understand what, it, what these things are, what you need, and what you don't need. Now in Lesson 1, you saw that your basic Cricut Joy comes with a few things beyond the machine and the power cord, right? So in the box, you had a green machine mat, which is this right here, a black pen, a piece of smart vinyl, and a piece of cardstock. And the blade itself was inside your Cricut, right? But there's a lot more tools, supplies, and accessories, and understanding them and knowing when to use what when goes a long way toward making what you love with your Cricut. Now, before we get too far, I want to remind you about my free Cricut Kickoff Principle Handbook that goes along with these lessons. You can, oops, <laughs> you can download it now at cricutkickoff.com. Uh, just register for the class and you'll get the handbook. It's all free. There's no strings attached to this. I'll be referring to it as we go along during today's lesson. There's a whole section on lesson two in here. So please pull up a chair here in my craft studio and let's get started. We have so many things here. I want to start with the blade, all right? Um, that's the very first thing most of us look for and need. The Cricut blade, sorry, the Cricut Joy has just one blade, the fine point blade, right? That makes it easy, really, because it means we don't have to worry about which blade to use for which project. Let me show you what the blade looks like. All right, so this is the blade. It's pretty simple. This is the housing of the blade, the silver part here, the little top of the, I always call this the plunger. It might have a better term, I don't know. Uh, you can push it in though, like this, and then you can see the blade there, right? So your blade will actually last a very long time. I rarely change my blades. I know someone asked me earlier about how often you have to change them. You really don't have to change them at all. You just need to keep them clean. And I'll talk a little bit how to keep them clean later. You can, of course, change them if you need to. You know, every once in a while something will happen. It'll get a nick or something. But for the most part, this should last you a very, very long time. So this is the, the blade. Isn't this little tiny little thing? Isn't that cute? All right. Now, and of course, it goes into, it goes right back into the Cricut. So easy. It just goes, drops right in there and closes. Now, there is another tool that you can put into your Cricut Joy. It's not a blade, it is uh, a tool though. So let me show you what that looks like. It is the foil transfer tool, okay? So the foil transfer tool, and it's available specifically for the Joy. Note that it says right here, Cricut Joy, that's important. Um, this goes in the Cricut Joy's clamp. And while it's not a blade, it is really cool. The foil transfer tool fits right into your clamp and it allows you to transfer the Cricut foil transfer sheets onto projects to make gorgeous cards and paper crafts. I have several tutorials where we use these. And this is what the transfer sheets look like. So you can get them in a variety of different colors. We did some projects with them recently. Uh, they're, they're fun. So this is the only other tool that fits in your clamp at the time that I'm recording this video, of course, you never know what might be coming down the line, but the, the foil transfer tool. And it's blue just like this, and it has one uh, medium-sized tip on it, right? So if you're familiar with the Explore and Maker version, uh, because there are different versions, uh, note that it does say Cricut Joy, so you want to get the right one. Whenever you're buying anything for your Cricut Joy, make sure it says Cricut Joy on it because things like blades and tools and pens are not interchangeable with the Cricut Explore and Maker. Okay, that's very important. Always look for that. So when you go to buy, let's say you get a nick in your blade and you need a new blade, this is what you want, right? You don't want to use a blade from your Explore or Maker, right? You want the Cricut Joy blade. Okay, so next, how about mats? Though This is the mat that came with your Cricut. It is um, a green standard grip mat and it was in your box. Uh, we didn't even have to use it in lesson one because the Cricut Joy can cut its smart materials without a mat. But you do want to have a mat so you can cut all of those other things 
that are not labeled as a smart material. There are three mats to choose from. There's the green standard grip mat that came in your box, and this is ideal for use with material like vinyl, medium and heavy cardstock, poster board, and smart material scraps that are too small to fit through the machine with a mat. And then there is a blue light grip mat. It looks like this. And this is a slightly less sticky mat, and it's best for use with light and medium weight card, or, yeah, cardstock, uh, vinyl, that sort of thing. I tend to use the green one a lot more, okay? Now, both of these two mats come in two sizes, the small four and a half by six and a half inch that came in your box, and the longer four and a half by 12 inch one like this. And there's one more mat that's only available for the Cricut Joy, well, at least in this size. And this is a specially designed mat with a divider to protect the back of folded Cricut insert cards while cutting a design on the front. Uh, just one important thing with the card mat, be sure to take the plastic cover off before using it. The first time my daughter went to use this, she didn't realize that she had to take the cover off because it's not quite as obvious as it is with other mats. Um, I would like to demonstrate that because I actually see people do this all the time still. So we're going to do it together so that you know what I mean. This is a brand new one in the package still. So this is just the, you know, the packaging. I don't mean that, right? Let's take it all the way out. Take off this little paper thing here too. There we go. So what I mean is this. It's not obvious, right? But there is a cover here. So the first time my daughter went to use this, and this is an insert card, right? So, and we'll talk about what, you know, what those are and the different ones that you can get. She put it in here, just like this. She took it out of the packaging. She put it in here and she tried to cut it. And she's like, mom, this is not working. What's wrong with this? And um, because it's, it's like, it fits perfectly. Um, had I been Cricut, I would have made it a little wider. So it's really clear that it's not supposed to be there. Uh, but, and it's I'm not cricket, so um, you not you want to be sure to remove this. You don't remove this, it'll just slide all over and it won't cut properly. Okay, lots of people make this mistake. If you made it before, don't feel bad. Okay, so be sure to remove that cover. Now I consider the cricket mats to be consumables. All right, they will need to be replaced over time as they'll get less and less sticky, but you can keep them going for quite a long time by cleaning them with baby wipes. Um, or, you know, just mild uh, dishwashing detergent, wash them by hand, um, and then be sure to let them dry. And that will get them a little stickier again. It'll clean them off. Once they're dry, they'll be stickier though. I have several videos that show me cleaning my mats. So you can extend their life by keeping them clean. And of course, always put your mat covers back on when you're done and that will help a lot. So these are our mats. These are the only three mats that we have so far. <laughs> All right, so the pen. This is the pen that came with your Cricut Joy. The Cricut Joy pens are great for writing on cards, making labels, embellishing paper crafts, all these fun things. The pens are water-based, acid-free, non-toxic, and they're permanent after they dry. Now it's very important to note that Cricut Joy pens are sized only for the Cricut Joy's clamp. You cannot use them in an Explorer Maker, and you cannot use the Explorer Maker pens in your Joy. The clamps are different sizes because the Joy's blade had to be specially made to work the way it does at its small size and get it all done, right? Now you've got this fine point pen, and it is a 0.4 size tip in black in your Cricut Joy, but there are so many other pens and markers. <laughs> Let me get a few of these out so you can see. So many others. I have them sitting over here. So, of course, there are lots of colors and there are different sizes. So here is the ultimate pen set for the Cricut Joy. You can see all the colors here. And there's all, and these are pens, and there's also, um, we'll get these out, markers. So the, these are the markers. So these are different tip sizes. So. The pens are 0.4 tip, right? So they're like fine point pens. And the markers are one point, see what it says right here at the bottom, one point tip. Note that they will say Cricut Joy on them, right? So if you're ever in doubt, if you get them and they're like, it doesn't say, 
that means they won't work. It needs to say Cricut Joy for them to work in your Cricut Joy. There's a lot though besides this. So in addition to these basics here, and this one is truly permanent, you can get it wet again, right? And it will stay permanent. These here, these other ones here, they're permanent when they're dry. But if you were to get them wet, like most pens, they would run, okay? They do have, and these are fairly new, these permanent markers here. But they also have things like metallic markers and glitter gel pens. They even have um, slightly smaller, even more extra fine tip pens. So with a 0.3 tip and gel pens if you like gel pens these are a, a, like a more like a marker because they have a a 1.0 tip I'll put them on the marker side glitter gel pens in other colors not just the metallics um, something new that they have are opaque gel pens so these are perfect for going on to darker uh, darker materials like cardstock. Um, there's a white one there, a yellow one, and a blue one. More permanent markers and more colors. Let's put these with their permanent markers here. There's really so many. There's so many pens. Um, if there's pretty much at this point, if you want it, they've got it. Glitter gel pens in these cute colors. I don't know where to put those now. <laughs> um, more glitter gel pens and more colors. So I think you get the picture here. I'm not going to set all these back up. Now this is a special one watercolor marker and brush set. So these, this is a recent addition. We did a tutorial on this in, uh, just recently and we made some beautiful bird cards. Let me show you. Let me show you one of the things that you can make with the pens. In your Cricut Joy. This is a watercolor pen. It was made with the watercolor pens on the Cricut. Isn't it beautiful? So we have a whole tutorial on how to do this, but the pens are so cool. In fact, uh, you know, we call it a cutting machine, but it's also a drawing machine, right? So even if we don't have great penmanship or the ability to draw well, our Cricut does, right? So we can make gorgeous things like this and it's, you know, we made it, we made it ourselves, right? And you can tell that it's pen and marker, that it's not printed on a printer. It's really neat. We just zoom in so you can see how beautiful that is. Isn't that lovely? You can make this. And I think that's most of the pens. There's there's a couple others. Oh, actually I'm forgetting something. Um, here's some metallic markers. One thing I'm forgetting are infusible ink pens. So infusible ink is a special sublimation material or whatever material. It's fluid, it's ink. It's sublimation ink, but it's in pen form. So you can put these into your Cricut Joy and then you can transfer it to uh, using sublimation. You can transfer it to a mug or a hat or a t-shirt or a tote bag. I have lots of tutorials on how to use infusible ink, but it's very cool. And uh, it, it's, it's, it can open up a whole new world of crafting for you. So yes, yeah, these, these are all our pens. Aren't they awesome? I love this card. Let's set this over here. Okay. And I had a question earlier also, while I'm resetting up all my pens, <laughs> about how long the Cricut pens last. So that's a great question. And there is no official word that I know of. And you can, if you'd like to watch me set these back up, you can. Uh, I did a little research this morning to see if I could find an official word, but I can't. So my experience is, and I've been using Cricut pens for, um, since, you know, I started using my Cricut, which would be almost six years now. Wow. Almost six years. And um, I haven't experienced hardly any dried out pens. Now I do recommend that you store your pens tip down or on their side. So they come in the package tip up, right? So as soon as you get them, I would recommend just like laying them down in your drawer, wherever you're storing them. And if you take them out to store them, um, either keep them on their side or tip down. I find that helps them be less likely to dry out. And also um, they're ready to go as soon as you're ready to use them. There's a lot of different ways to store pens too. Um, I am storing some of mine here in my tool holder, but you can get 
um, all sorts of things to store them. In fact, I have one back here. Let me finish setting this up and then I will get, and I'll show you one of the ways that I like to store my pens. I know you are all gonna ask because there's so many pens. There really are so many pens. Okay. This is a little tool organizer that I have for my dream box. My dream box is the big cupboard behind me, right? I'm sure many of you already know about it because I talk about it a fair amount and you see me using it. But I, they have a like a, a tool cubby, tool holder, I forget what it's called, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, it's perfect for storing Cricut pens. So I keep my pens in here organized by color and by type. I've got all, uh, lots, as you can see, I have lots of different pens in here. So this is a great way to store them because you can store them so that they're all really easily accessible to get to. And also, something I wanna show you, the bottom of the pen is actually labeled. So like G for gel, M for marker, uh, and F for fine, and there's also a GG for glitter gel. So you can see both the color and the type of pen just by looking at the end of the pen. So it's super useful. So that's the pen holder. Okay. Um, there's really a lot of pens. And there's more being introduced all the time. Cricut is always bringing out new pens. They brought out several new just in the past year. Um, now, and um, let's see, if there's anything else about pens I want to make sure. Just make sure you store them tip down in your accessory tray. Like, so there's no tray on the, the, the Cricut Joy, but you, know, you, you don't need to be fancy about this. You can just get yourself a coffee mug or um, some other kind of organizer and just put them tip down in there, right? Um, this is, I know, because you're going to ask me about this. This is my 3D, um, his 3D. This is my Cricut tool holder. Greg designed this for me, goodness, like three years ago now, and we have freely shared the file for this. This is 3D printed. Many people have made it. I love that they made it. But anyways, on the sides here, you can store some pens. So if you don't have a lot of pens or you use certain pens frequently, there's a little spot right on the side to store them. And of course, all of the other things, your blades, your tools, everything like this. It's on my blog if you have a 3D printer and you would like to make it. It's super cool. It's got like a little drawer on the bottom and everything. Here, let me show you. Because a lot of the tools we're gonna talk about are actually in here, see? So I, these tools here are for the Explored Maker, so don't be confused by that. Um, but it's got this little drawer you can actually kind of mix and match how you make it. It's a fun project if you or someone you know has a 3D printer. It's not difficult to make either. Now, one other pen that is worth noting are these Cricut Infusible ink pens, right? Now, these won't fit in your Cricut Joy, but they're freehand pens. They have dual tips on them, so you can still get them as a Cricut Joy owner and still use them to draw. You just, your Cricut Joy itself won't they won't fit in your joy, right? So, but they're called infusible ink freehand pens. So that's another option. But see how I'm storing them tip down like this? And we designed this so that the Cricut pens would fit tip down in them, of course. <laughs> okay, so in fact, since I have the tools out, we can start talking about the tools, right? There's really a lot of tools that you can buy for your Cricut joy. Um, overwhelmingly so. Some are useful, some are less so. The ones I recommend you get, the ones that I use all the time, are the scraper, I've got my scraper down here, and the weeding tool, which is right here. So, so that's not the weeding tool, sorry. This is the weeding tool here. All right, now, the scraper is great for getting all the little bits off of your mats. I have both a small one, this is a small one here, and a big one. And both are great for the Cricut Joy. And when I say get things off your mat, let's grab a mat here. So here is the blue light grip mat, right? 
So if you do a project on it, we'll just pretend that I've done a project, right? And um, you will, you'll get as little pieces of paper on here. If it's, if it's cardstock, if it's vinyl, you won't have that problem. You can just take the whole thing off. But if it's cardstock, you'll have little pieces from when you remove the cardstock. So you can take your scraper and you can just go like this right across and it'll remove them. It is so much faster than using like picking each one off with your finger, which by the way, can also hurt. If you've ever done that, you know what I'm talking about. And then of course the bigger one is even faster. It's like perfectly sized for the Cricut Joy Mat. So I highly recommend the scraper. Um, you don't need to have the big one. Um, in fact, you don't even need to have the Cricut scraper itself. You can just use an, um, a plastic card from your wallet, like an old store loyalty card or something like that. It just should be rigid plastic. Okay, so that's the scraper. Let's put my little scraper back here. All right, and the weeding tool. This is the weeding tool right here. The weeding tool is used to remove excess vinyl from a cut, which we call weeding. <laughs> this is how you get all those bits out that you don't want. I also use the weeding tool on intricate paper craft projects as well because sometimes little bits need to be poked out. So this is the weeding tool. There's actually some different tips that you can get for it, but this is the classic one. I'll make it, put that focus for a second. There we go. With a tip that looks like this, right? This is the one that will be your best friend. Okay. Next we have the spatula. This is the spatula. It's another option and it's used for removing materials from your mats. Like when you're taking them off your mat. I don't use it as often. I use it a little bit more now than I used to, but it's super useful if you have a lot of very small pieces of cardstock that you want to remove from your mat without damaging them. Okay. Now we will use this tool when we're just trying to clean our mat off, right? We don't care if anything gets messed up or whatever as we're scraping it off. This one we remove when we want to be sure that the little pieces don't bend or get torn. Okay. So spatula is useful to have. Now, all three of these actually come in a starter set for the Cricut Joy, which looks like this. So this is the Cricut Joy starter set, the weeding tool, the spatula, and the scraper. So you can get this, but keep in mind that the Joy handcrafting tools like this are not any different than the ones for the Explore and Maker. So if you have or you find another set of Cricut crafting tools like this, feel free to use it instead. But these, by the way, will match your Cricut Joy, like if that matters to you. So they're the same blue color as your Cricut Joy. So this is the Cricut Joy starter tool set. All right. Another tool that I think is really handy is this one. This is the True Control Craft Knife. Um, it is amazing. This is actually the weeding kit, but you know, it's the same thing. It is a special razor sharp nonstick blade. You probably saw me using it when I opened up the Cricut box and the seals yesterday. Craft knives are so useful for doing manual cuts and sometimes that means like a project that almost cut all the way through, but there's this tiny, this little tiny little bit <laughs> that needs to be, you know, taken off. It could be a design issue, whatever. And you can easily cut it with this craft knife. Now, the one I have here is special. It's not just the knife, but it's rather a four-in-one tool where I can change the tip to add on a special weeding tool. And there's four different tips here. I love this tool and I use it nearly every day. If you use the True Control knife, you'll also want a self-healing mat like the one that you see here. Not this, but this one. Now, this is not an adhesive mat. This is the, not the kind you put in your Cricut, but rather it's an extra thick mat that you can use to cut things with your craft knife. And it's a self-healing mat, which means that it's made from separate tiny pieces of material which are pressed together to create what feels like a solid surface. But when you cut on it, the blades actually go between the tiny pieces. So here's my blade. Um, so you can cut on it without hurting it. Thus we call it a self-healing mat. I always craft on one of these mats, usually this large one, because I find it so much easier to keep it clean than like my normal work surface, right? I can just wipe it down with alcohol when it needs to be cleaned, okay? So they come in different sizes, different colors, I'm sure. Most of you probably know, have one of these already, but if you don't, super, super useful. All right, so that's the, the weeding kit. Okay, so 
A couple other smaller tools that I find useful are, I'm gonna put this out of the way here for us, uh, the brayer. This is the brayer tool. I use it for adhering material to the mat. So especially cardstock. So when we put a piece of cardstock on our mat, you can just press it down with your fingers, sure. But if you use the brayer to adhere it, it's going to stick better, which means it's gonna cut better, right? So I highly, highly recommend the brayer if you're doing paper crafting. If you're not doing paper crafting, you probably don't need the brayer at all. Otherwise, it will be your best friend for getting nice, clean cuts, especially on intricate materials. All right, something else I really like is this little thing. This is not put out by Cricut. This is a actually a nail polish holder, um, but you w put it on your fingers like this, and the idea like is that you would, you know, use it for for doing nails or whatever, but we use it for weeding. So when we're weeding something, we can pick up a little bit of it and then it's stuck on the blade, you know, the tip, right? And then we can just put it into here and it just comes right off like this. So we can just keep going and we just use this, right? I have the, by the way, everything that I'm talking about, I have links to so that you're not, so we'll talk about where to find these things at the end so that you can do that. So I will actually show you the page where everything is located. So for now, don't worry about it. But yeah, this is a, we call it a weeding ring, but it's actually like a nail polish ring. So it's super useful and just stays right in your hand while you're working and I love it. Something else I find useful, especially for weeding, are these magnifying glasses. Uh, I love them. They have interchangeable lenses here so you can change your magnification factor. There's a little light on them. I don't use the light very often. I don't know if it's working. There it is, so see, right? They look a little funny, I will admit, but they work amazing. <laughs> They're really, really good. So if you have any issues seeing things, uh, definitely check these out, okay? Again, I'll share the link with these. Now, there are other tools that you may want to uh, use. So this, not this one, let's see if I can find it. This one here. This tool is well loved. This is actually, oh my goodness, I forgot the name of it. <laughs> a quilling tool, that's it. This is a quilling tool. It's used for making paper flowers. If you ever are into paper flowers, the smaller ones, not the giant ones. A little hard to come by. Mine's obviously well worn and well loved. But if you want to make paper flowers, this is a quilling tool. Uh, this is a piercing tool. It can be useful doing um, vinyl weeding, right, for picking up vinyl. Useful for some paper crafting. So that's that. Let's see here. This is a rotary cutter. Um, I don't think this is something that you really need unless you just would like to have a rotary cutter that says Cricut on it. So there's lots of rotary cutters out there. It's perfectly fine. There's no issues with it. I've had this one for a while too. Um, but generally speaking, you know, I tend to want to use rotary cutters for fabric and we don't cut fabric on the Cricut Joy. So it's up to you whether you would need that, but I suspect you don't. And those are the basic Cricut tools that you can get. So let's talk about materials. I've got lots of vinyl and infusible ink here. I have insert cards. Let's start with our insert cards. It's in my water. Let's move up. Let's rearrange things just a little bit. Let's move these back over here. There we go. I'll put my water back here. Okay. Insert cards. So one of the particularly cool things about the Cricut Joy is that you can make cards really easily and fast. It's one of the favorite uses for the Joy. I think cards and labels are two big primary uses for the Cricut Joy cutting machine. So you can buy these cool cards that you can just put in there and cut. So let me show you what some of these look like. I have lots here. They come in all different colors and sizes, lots of choices. So, and these are two different types here. So this is a foil transfer insert card, which looks similar to this one, except the part inside is um, foil. Now it's called an insert card because it actually, 
comes like this. So this is the part you begin with and it's, you know, it's not cut yet, of course. <laughs> and then you put it onto your card mat. Let me show you here. Here is our card mat, right? So you take off your cover, of course, like I showed you, and then you insert your card into here. And these are the three different sizes that you can cut on your joy, right? They're all marked on here. So you want to line them up and then it's, you stick it down to your mat and you put it into your Cricut Joy and you cut it. And then you remove it from your card mat. And then you can take the pre-cut insert and you put it right into these little corners here like this. So it's super cool, very easy. You can make a card in minutes like this. So they come in all different sizes and colors and types. This is a, just an all cardstock one, but still very cute, I think right? So easy. So this one has foil insert. This one is also foil, but it's actually a cutaway card. And a cutaway card is different because it's all sticky. And uh, so you can do like in this one, everything has to be done a certain way. Things have to be connected. So like you'll notice these letters are actually stenciled, a stencil font. See how the A doesn't close, right? There's still a little bit so everything is connected. Nothing is lost, right? You're not losing the middles of your A's or your O. If you use a cutaway card, you can have pretty much any design because it's all stuck onto it because it's the, the insert is adhesive. So it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a fun way to do cards so that you can have more options in your designs. And then we have watercolor cards, right? So here's our watercolor. One of them, we have four, we have five different designs and a whole tutorial on how to make these, um, but you can do the watercolor cards. Now, the, the these cards are just watercolor paper, which is best for using the watercolor pens because it'll blend so beautifully, but they do come with envelopes and all of these come with envelopes, which is super useful. So they're just the right size for these. Now, it's important you know that you do not have to use Cricut's insert cards or cutaway cards or watercolor cards if you wanna make a card. It is not required, right? You can just take a piece of paper, fold it in half and put it onto your card mat, right? That's all you have to do, right? But the, if you would like them ready to go, you know, so like, you know, you know you're gonna make a card and you've got 15 minutes to make a card with something like this, it would be possible, right? If you're cutting your own card stock, maybe not, unless you did it in advance, of course, and had it all ready to go. So yeah, so those are all the different cool insert cards, lots of options there. All right, so we could talk about, now let's keep talking about Cricut Joy materials since we're on the Cricut Joy. So here we have vinyl and infusible ink. So you can use whatever vinyl and whatever infusible ink transfer sheets you already have, but Cricut does sell pre-sized vinyl, right? So if you want to use it, and the only thing you have is a Cricut Joy, I recommend getting this size. It's all ready to go. Also, these are smart materials. So you can put them into your Cricut Joy without needing a mat. And that's really nice, right? So they have smart vinyl and permanent and removable. So here we go, I'll show them to you. All the colors that you could think of, right? So this is removable, right? And this one has a variety of different colors in it. And this one is permanent. We use removable vinyl on things where this surface is fragile, like a wall, right? We don't want to remove drywall when we go to remove it. You know, appliances, it might be good. Anything where you know you're going to take it off, right? We use permanent on things where we're going to keep it there. So we're making signs. We want to use permanent. We're putting it onto our car window. We want to use permanent, stuff like that. Now, if we're using smart vinyl or, you know, any kind of vinyl, if you're using a vinyl that's not smart vinyl, right, you'll want to use your mat. You can use the blue mat or the green mat for that. And you would just cut it to size and put it onto your mat, right? So with the smart materials, you can put them right into your Cricut Joy, just like we did yesterday in lesson one. If you're using just a piece of regular vinyl that you have from something else, um, or you just got that larger size, you just wanna cut it to fit your mat and then you can cut it on your Cricut Joy. So it's either or, you know, or both whatever, right? Um, now, if you're using this um, vinyl, whether it's smart vinyl or regular vinyl, you'll also want some transfer tape and they sell it in Cricut Joy sized. 
So that's useful because I think it finds, I find that I have less waste if I'm using the properly sized material. Okay. And then um, there's also, in addition to a removable and permanent vinyl, we have iron on vinyl. Here it is. And, and all of these come in solids and things like glitter, right? So lots of different colors, lots of different finishes. This is a pretty teal color. This is teal and this one is silver, silver glitter iron on, which you can see here. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. So um, again, this is smart smart material so it doesn't need a mat but if you already have iron on vinyl or you get some that's on a roll um, and larger size you can just cut it and put it onto your mat right so you have lots of options here um, for example and if in if also you get the larger sized smart materials because they also sell that for the explore three and maker three you could trim that to size and you should be able to cut that without a mat in your Cricut. You just got to get the size precise, right? That's important. It might be more trouble than it's worth. I don't know. I have, I have uh, resized some things to fit at times. Okay. And then in addition to uh, our vinyls, we have infusible ink and it's also sized for the Cricut Joy. So infusible ink, yeah, these are transfer sheets so you can cut them and then transfer them to sublimation friendly surfaces. Um, Cricut sells mugs and shirts, all sorts of cool things. Um, it just needs to have a high polyester count for it to work. I have lots of tutorials on this too, but we have joy sized infusible ink sheets. Um, if you have the larger size, you can of course cut them to fit. So no problems there. And one more thing I wanna show you also so that you know, infusible ink comes in cool patterns right? Like this one too, right? So you're not limited to solid colors. You can do some really cool patterns. And one more thing that's joy sized in as far as on a roll at least is smart label. So they have rolls of smart label material uh, that you can use with say this little beauty. These two are perfect for labeling. So, you know, it's, we're getting close to that time of the year when we want to organize everything. So these two together would make amazing pantry labels or labels for whatever room or whatever thing you need. Uh, you can write on this vinyl, you can cut it in all sorts of shapes, whatever you want it to, you know, to match your, your personality or your decor. And these are permanent markers. So if they get wet, they will not run or smear. So that's a great combination if you're thinking about using your joy for organization. As I know, some of you might be because I know I am. <laughs> I'm thinking about organizing some things. Okay, let's see. So those are our, our these are, mo actually we have one more thing that is specifically for the Cricut Joy. So let me show you that. Don't want to fall. Okay, so I have another cart over here and it's paper. Let's bring this in. All right, so Cricut also makes a whole bunch of special paper, okay? Um, so let me show you this paper so you know what it's all about. So they, it is adhesive backed paper. So this is useful for those of you who do paper crafting and make cards and stuff like that. So, and it's all these cool patterns, right? So it deluxe paper and it's got adhesive on the back. Right, so it's all ready to go, so you don't have to glue it or anything like that. Lots of cool patterns. Aren't these pretty? And then they make smart label that's in this size, not on a roll. So it's and it's a different color. It's brown, right? So uh, it's, this is more like paper rather than vinyl. This other stuff I showed you here. This is a vinyl, and this one is a paper. Right. So it just depends on what you want it for. You can write on both of them. You can't write on normal vinyl. It'll just sort of smear off. So, you know, that's why there's a special writable vinyl. It's just the way that vinyl is made. So they have a special coating on that vinyl. You can also get uh, this, the vinyl in these sheets like this. So this is also smart label. This one's removable. And we also, you can also do it in permanent. So you can get permanent and removable. You can get it in white. You can get it in black. 
and here's a couple other of the um, adhesive paper and this is um, like sticker card stack so again great for cards anything where you know that you're going to need to glue it or put adhesive on it in some way so there's white and there's pastel colors and I think there's also some primary colors there's a lot of Cricut stuff <laughs> so those are the specific Cricut um, papers but of course you can use any paper in your Cricut Joy. You just need to cut it to size. So something else that's very useful to have as a Cricut Joy owner is this handy little thing. This is a paper trimmer, okay? So uh, Cricut sells one, many other companies sell one. But one of the cool things about the Cricut one is that it's sized for their materials, right? This is, I think, the 13 inch one. Um, which actually fits the larger smart materials so that could be useful to you uh, let me show you how this works because there's a little there's a couple of little quirks to this in a good way not a bad way a lot of people don't quite know so uh, the way it works let's grab a piece of paper so i can show you all right here is a piece of yellow paper so the way it works is you lift up on the guard right here and you pull out the side right here this is a ruler and another guy a, a guide for your paper a lot of people don't realize that's there so it's just tucked into the side right here so it just pulls out like this all right so and then you place your paper in now for the Cricut Joy you want to cut your paper to the size of your mat so the mats are oops let's turn it over so we can see because one side is inches one side centimeters you can use either side by the way right it's just they have the measurements on there in different ways so four and a half inches wide by 12 inches long that's the the larger mat the smaller one is six inches long so four and a half inches wide is right here right so you just make sure that it is up against this guide here right this guide right up here let me not move that on myself just like so you can just kind of press it so it's up to like that and at four and a half inches okay and then with this press part pressed down and you'll see here there is a sliding uh, blade okay so either you can start at either end it doesn't matter so you just press it down and then you just slide it down like this I usually just go right back up to the top too to make sure I got everything and now you have a piece of paper perfectly sized for your Cricut Joy uh, so you can use all the paper that you have for this, whatever, whatever you might have will fit if you trim it. And using a paper trimmer like this means that it's going to be exact. You know, a pair of scissors works, yes, but it's unlikely that you're going to get it the right size. Something else I want to note about this paper trimmer, um, you can fold away your ruler. You can change the blade. So it's you can see the blade is right here so if you your blade gets dull or something you can change it and uh, just this part pops right off you can also by the way buy a scoring um, tip for this little blade here Cricut sells the one that's a blade and one that's a scoring tool so because the Cricut Joy doesn't do scoring there's no scoring tool for it so if you wanted to score your cards or something because you're making your own cards you could buy a scoring tip for your your um, your blade and then you can store them here in the back these little these little compartments here are where you can put like your different tips so your blade and your scoring tip can go right here in the back um, yeah so this is a really cool and useful tool very useful tool as a Cricut Joy owner I highly recommend it um, now I mentioned the blade and it getting dirty um, so this is actually a good time I think to tell you about how to keep your blade clean. So what I use for keeping my blades clean is a sheet of aluminum foil. This is a well-loved container from my kitchen. Just regular old aluminum foil. It doesn't have to be anything special. So I will show you the am amazingness of this. So you just take off a sheet. There we go. Now, it is possible to actually put this onto your mat and cut it if you want, but yeah, that's a lot of work. So what I do is I ball it up like this, and a nice, 
nice tight little ball. And I take out my blade on my Cricut Joy. Here it is, right? And carefully, so being very mindful, because of course this is a little blade and it's very sharp, I, I push down on the plunger like this, right? And then I carefully poke this aluminum ball, aluminum foil ball. So doing this does a few things. It cleans off little bits of glitter. It cleans off adhesive. It also cleans off oxidation. I mean, this is just a blade. It's a German carbide blade, so it's an awesome blade, but like most metals, it can still oxidize over time. So this cleans it all off. It cleans off the stuff that's a little hard to get and the things that are more chunky. <laughs> and it works like a charm. I've been doing this for years and I don't buy replacement blades. I highly recommend this, just be cautious. If you don't trust yourself to do this, and you know, I haven't actually ever heard of anyone hurting themselves, but I always worry, of course. Uh, but if you are worried about it, you can also use rubbing alcohol. The only thing about that is I don't think it works as well because it doesn't, it will do great at removing adhesive, but you know, you have to like touch it and I think you're more likely to hurt yourself. So maybe an, an alcohol wipe or something like that, just to be careful that you don't hurt yourself. So those are the two ways that people clean their blades, aluminum foil ball and rubbing alcohol. I prefer the aluminum foil ball. So I just, you will see in my tutorials, there's usually a little ball of aluminum foil somewhere. That's what that is if you ever see that. And I'm like, what is she doing with that? What, what is that? Is that really a piece of aluminum foil? It is, it's really a piece of aluminum foil. All right, so you can just keep this, you know, with your tools. <laughs> so you have it. If you are cutting glitter cardstock or anything like that, you may want to clean it frequently. Those little tiny bits that make up glitter cardstock, they can come off when you're cutting and they can attach to your blade and make it hard. Okay, so let's talk about cardstock. In fact, that's a great segue. There's so many different kinds of cardstock. I don't know if we can talk about all of these today, but I'm gonna get a bunch of these out so we can, we can discuss them. Cardstock comes in everything from like, uh, well, we like to usually describe it by its weight, right? So weight means it's thickness, really. So the lowest weight, light cardstock, is like 65 pound. You can even go like to 50 pound, 55 pound. 65 pound cardstock is the typical uh, medium cardstock range, but it can go all the way up to like 110 pound, which is really very thick. It's like a card. It's very, it's still flexible, right? But it is more like a, um, you know, a rigid card. Okay, so. Here are a bunch of papers. Let's bring them in here. Uh, Cricut sells cardstock. I just find it difficult to get, but there, I do have a little bit of Cricut cardstock in here somewhere. Uh, they make great cardstock. Um, not all cardstock is created equally. The brands I like are Recollections. This is Recollections right here. You can see the name on it. Um, I like Cricut. I like Recollections. I like DCWV, but mostly just for their pattern cardstock, which is what like this is. See, cool patterns. This is actually double-sided. That's cool. Um, and I like American Crafts. I often recommend this brand. It's really high quality cardstock. It's great. One side is textured, one side is not. So that's nice. Um, and it comes in lots of cool colors. I also prefer to work with solid core cardstock. And that means that it's the same color all the way through. So when you look at it on the side, you see the, the colors of the cardstock, right? You don't see like white or pastel. An example of one that's not solid core would be this one here, right? So this one has a lot of, you can see it's got some dark colors in it, but when you look at it on the side, it's basically all white. So, um, and that's gonna happen when you have a printed cardstock, right? It can't be solid core. It can't be dyed all the way through because there's a pattern on it. So it has to be white core instead of solid core. Um, so that's to be expected with this. But otherwise, you really do want to work with solid core cardstock. Um, not only does it look better after it's cut because you don't see white edges around all of your cuts, but also I feel that it's a higher quality cardstock because of the way that it's um, 
you know, it's, instead of being printed, it's dyed in the paper making process. So it's just a higher quality. I find it easier to cut. If you're having an issue cutting your cardstock, always look at what you're using. You know, is, are you using a good quality? Is it solid core? Is it like really moist? If your cardstock is being kept in a humid environment, it's going to get harder to cut. There's a lot of factors that go in, but these are my favorite brands. This brand, not my favorite brand, sorry. <laughs> I'm not a fan of Park Lane, so sorry about that. I do really like Cardstock Warehouse, however. They have great paper. I get this on Amazon. You'll see me recommend this frequently in my tutorials. And then Cricut has some awesome, I love their glitter cardstock. This is a pack of their cardstock. You can see, usually it comes like this. You can usually get this at the store, but you can order it also from Cricut. Um, here is some sparkle paper. This stuff is gorgeous. I'm trying to trying to show you how pretty it is. I mean, look at look at this lovely color. I love this stuff, right? So foil poster board also from Cricut. Cricut has definitely has great specialty materials. Acetate. We use acetate for putting windows and things, shaker cards, things like that. So this is the acetate sheet from Cricut. Um, this is something else. And this is, I'm not sure what that is, okay. And then here is one of the larger sizes of smart paper. So you can still use these large sizes of the smart materials. You'll just need to trim them to size. Now it won't be four and a half inches, right? Because that's what goes onto your mat. Instead, you wanna trim them to the size of your mat, which I believe is five and a half inches. Okay, so that's important. So any smart material that you trim down to size to fit, on your Cricut and you don't want to use a mat for it. It needs to be this, the width of your mat, right? So just use this as a guide. So from this side, to this side. All right. And then one of the other cool, fun papers that Cricut makes is they have a, they have some um, licensed papers that are, can be hard to find. So this is Marvel. They have some Disney stuff too. Maybe even seem some unusual stuff. All right. I think I've got most, oh wait, nope, I've forgotten one thing. Some of our tools, I can't forget that. Let me put this all back here. All right, so this, this side. So I mentioned infusible ink and iron on vinyl. Well, those are both, those both require heat to activate, right? We use heat to press our iron on vinyl onto our material. And we also use heat for infusible ink, both the pens and the transfer sheets. So we need presses. So let's bring those out. So here are a variety of Cricut's heat presses. Not this, move this to the side for now. So the classic is the Cricut Easy Press which looks like this. This is uh, the nine by nine inch side. It has this lovely flat platen here. It's perfect for getting beautiful transfers and it works for, in fact, everything here works for both iron on vinyl and infusible ink. So this is the nine by nine size. They also have a 12 by 10 inch size easy press, but if you're on the Cricut Joy, you probably are gonna be good with this nine by nine inch size. You can, of course, get the cute little mini. This is the mini Easy Press. Um, it is actually really good if you have a Cricut Joy because so many things are going to be small that you do. So it's just a little one, and you can just you actually in this case you move this one around as you heat. This one can also do infusible ink. Infusible ink requires a slightly higher temperature. That's why there can be some variation there. So that's the mini. And this here is the easy, the mug press. Let's get this out. So Cricut makes a mug press, which we use for the infusible ink transfer sheets or pens and markers. It's really cool. You put your pen in here with the design wrapped around it and you close it. And the mug press determines the right temperature and pressure for you without you having to worry about it. I have lots of tutorials on using the mug press if you would like to do mugs. The cool thing about the infusible ink mugs is that you can put them in the dishwasher, wash, you know, you can do all the things and it's not going to wear off or peel off or anything like that. So it's pretty cool. And then in the last year, they also came out with a hat press. 
also perfect for Joy users. This is the hat press form. And this is the hat press itself. Right? So you put your hat on the form and then, you know, you, it actually kind of goes, you're really the, um, the form goes inside the hat, right? And then you um, can press your design on here. And in this, again, this is used for iron-on vinyl and infusible ink. So it's pretty cool. So that's the hat press. Um, so if you're going to be using infusible ink or iron-on vinyl, you may also like to know that Cricut has a bunch of different things that you can use with that. Let me show you some of these. So they make their own mugs. They have two different sizes. You can use any sublimation friendly mugs for this, um, but Cricut has their own and they're pretty awesome. They have coasters. These are used for infusible ink. So these round ceramic coasters. The, in fact, let me show you a finished one. So you can see what that looks like. Go. So this is a coaster, right? See it's ceramic, but this is infusible ink. We did this with an infusible ink transfer sheet. So they have coasters, they have round ones and square ones. These are, these are ceramic and these are cork backed. And then all sorts of blanks for both iron on vinyl and infusible ink. So there's tote bags and shirts. This is a baby bodysuit and they have adult size shirts and uh, there's makeup bags and pillowcases, all sorts of things. Um, pillow shams, right? Now you don't have to use Cricut's blanks, but the cool thing about them is that we know that they work really well with Cricut materials. So there's always that. They're also pretty easy to find at your local craft store. <laughs> and other brands are not, but you can use other brands of sublimation blanks with your infusible ink because infus infusible ink, again, is a kind of, a, of sublimation ink, right? It's just the brand name that Cricut uses for their sublimation ink product. Okay, and I think now I have covered pretty much everything. I feel like I have covered at least all the basics. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of stuff, isn't it? It's a lot of stuff. So much, so much more, so much more than when I first started doing Cricut Kickoff three to four years ago. Really, quite a few things. There are some things I didn't mention. There's a bigger press, the Cricut Auto Press. I think most Cricut Joy users probably aren't going to want to go for the really big press because you are limited by the size of your, you know, what you can cut. That said, you would be surprised at what you can do on the Cricut Joy. In my Cricut College course, um, I have a variety of projects. They're full-size projects, and you can actually do all of them on all of the machines, even things that you wouldn't think that you could do because I'm showing you all the different tools and techniques that you can use to use a small, um, a small cutting machine to do a big project. So um, sometimes it requires, it usually requires piecing and putting things together or, you know, slicing things apart and then putting it back together when you're assembling it. But you would be amazed at what you can do. But still, usually, I think most people who have the Cricut Joy want to do smaller projects. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything major that I'm missing. Oh, the bright pad. I do have that down here. This also came out this year, I think. Uh, the Cricut Bright Pad, there's two versions of it. There is the Bright Pad, which is what well, plugs in, and the Bright Pad guy. Let me show you what this is. All right. So this is a light pad, and we use it mostly for weeding, but it's also useful because it basically illuminates from the back and it's great if you're having an issue seeing. So this is what it looks like. This is the Bright Pad Go, and so it doesn't, it can charge and it doesn't have to be plugged in. And we turn it on like this. We'll probably get really bright here. We go. It's got variable light right on it. So it's really useful. Like if you're having a problem seeing uh, your, the cut lines in your vinyl, you can put your vinyl onto this and then you can see it better. 
So really, really nice to have. I like it. I use it. And something else, actually, let's see if I can show you that did come out in the last year are the lamps. One moment. I forgot that I was going to show these to you. So they're kind of tucked off to the side here where I usually keep them. I don't know if it's plugged in, but I'll show it to you at the very least. So here's the top of it. So they have these really cool lamps that swivel and just like with a touch of a hand and they, you can change the temperature of the light. Let's see if it's turned on right now. Oh, I think it is. Yes, it is. Um, so you can change the temperature, right? So here's a warm light. Here's a cool light. I often have it in the middle and the intensity, right? There's an off, there's light and there's high. So these two tools together, the Cricut, the, this, this is the floor lamp because I have it on my floor. There's also a desk lamp version, but the Cricut Bright 360 and the Bright Pad like this, you would basically be able to see everything. <laughs> <laughs> nothing would be hidden from you, right? So having light below and light above be really, really helpful when you're doing a lot of things. So this is not just for Cricut, right? And certainly we use it for weeding, but you can use it for pretty much any craft, especially those that are small and tiny. And then if you compare it with these, there is nothing that you're not going to be able to do. <laughs> You'll be able to see everything. All right. I think, I think that we got it all now. Let's turn that off. There we go. All righty. So I know that's a lot of stuff. It's really too much stuff. So I want to caution everyone right now to not be like, oh, I need to have all these things. I have all these things because I like to teach people how to use their crickets. I wouldn't normally have all these things, okay? What I want you to do is think about what you're going to make. Are you going to do cards and paper crafts? Are you going to do vinyl crafts? Are you going to do infusible ink? Think about that and focus on one of these crafts first. And then get the basic supplies and tools, maybe even just a single tool that you need. Don't go get all the things, please. Get what you need for a project. <laughs> Don't just collect all the supplies because in my experience, from listening to all of you, and even just my own experience, having all of these things is really actually quite overwhelming and intimidating, not to mention expensive. We do not need to be doing and buying all these things. Um, because when you have everything, you're like, well, I don't know where to start, right? And also you can just sort of get into this mindset of, oh, I have all these things and they're almost become like collector things that you're collecting but not using. I want you to use your craft tools and supplies, not just collect them. All right, so get what you need for a project. I recommend you follow my tutorials because I always tell you precisely what you need. You don't need to have the extra things, right? If you're not sure where you want to start, the starter tool set is a great place to begin. It has the basic tools that you're going to need. This a pack of paper or a roll of vinyl or infusible ink and your Cricut Joy are going to be enough to get you started. Remember, if you're going to do infusible ink, um, if you're going to do iron on vinyl, you can use your household iron. But if you're going to use infusible ink, you will need something like the Easy Press, the regular size or the mini. You can get the mini for a great price, right? It's a great place to begin. So don't collect all of the tools and supplies. Things that you don't need as a beginner would be things like your bright pad or your lamp. These are things that you discover you need if you're having issues seeing um, later on. So don't collect these things in the beginning. Save them for when you've decided that you're having an issue and you need to solve the problem, right? Not just get them. You don't need to have every color of vinyl and every one. Get what you need for a specific project. And then when you have another project in mind, get it for that. Over time, yes, you will collect things. So many of the things I have here are from doing projects, of course. And then you can start worrying about storing them. <laughs> but in the beginning, keep it simple. Keep it simple for your sanity and your pocketbook and all of those reasons. Don't go overboard and go nuts, okay? Um, all right, so in your Cricut Kickoff handbook, 
some notes here so that you know. Let's take a look at this. All right, so in the handbook, we have a whole section on lesson two, right? Um, and we went through all of these things, blades, mats, weeding tools, your craft knife, cardstock, adhesive vinyl, iron on vinyl, infusible ink, and an iron or an easy press, right? But here, I want you to note that you can make a note of what you have, right? So you can record notes of what blades you found. Now, on the Cricut Joy, you don't use this one here, and um, or this one, so not these two, and none of these. So you're only two, they're labeled Joy right here. So these are your, your, your blades for the Cricut Joy, but you can make notes of these things. So I highly recommend you do, right? Same for your pens and markers. Make a note of what you have. That way, when you go to the store and you see a sale, you know you've got it already. You're not buying it again, right? Same for mats, okay? And all you can record all of your favorite brands of your vinyl and your cardstock and your craft glue, all of that. In fact, your craft glue. That's just that one thing I want to tell you about. Let me let me be right back and grab my glue because that's a big one. This is a glue that I have discovered in the last couple years and have been talking more and more about. And uh, it makes such a big difference. Um, a lot of people will start with something like Elmer's glue and, you know, or whatever glue they have, school glue, and then have issues with it. This is Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. I swear by this stuff now. I discovered it oh, about a year and a half ago, and it made such a difference in my ability to glue things without it warping or being a gigantic mess. It's really, really, really good stuff. And I know that everyone else loves it too. <laughs> I don't think I've come across anyone who doesn't love it. Um, so this is really, really good glue. So if you're looking for a good glue for paper crafting, I recommend Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. You can get it on Amazon. You can also get it over at um, barelyart.com. And actually, if you go to jennifermaker.com slash barelyart and you put in the um, discount code Jennifer Maker, you can save 10%. And I am not telling you that because of that. I had I have been recommending this glue since long before that. So this, this stuff is great. As I'm sure those of you who are watching, yes, indeed, I see Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth says I'm buying that glue. Um, but this stuff is amazing. A lot of people use it. We, we all love it here at Jennifer Maker. Okay. Um, so record your things, make notes of things. And then when you because not everybody uses the Cricut every day. I mean, even I have days when I don't use mine, right? You forget things. This is normal. Record what you're doing so that you know what you've got. So you can also record where you're keeping things so you can find it. Your inventory of your supplies, all of this. I highly, highly recommend a notebook. You can cut out, sorry, you can print out additional pages as you need for this. Put it into a three ring binder, right? Record your stuff. Um, we keep, we create lessons, um, sorry, we create transcripts of all of our lessons for Cricut Kickoff. So after this video is done and we've gotten a professional transcript made, you'll be able to get the transcript for this video. We have our older ones. And then also, you know, we've got our questions to answers. So definitely use your handbook for your tools and supplies. And yeah. All right. So if you have any more questions, at all about the tools, accessories, and supplies used for the Cricut Joy, please let me know. You can leave your question below this video or you can ask over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters, where you can get help and guidance from hundreds of, th no, over half a million of Cric <laughs> Cricut Crafters just like you. It is an awesome group. It is a big place, but it's super friendly and welcoming. And if you also want to learn about the tools used for the Cricut Explore and Cricut Maker, because they are quite different, I have lessons on those cutting machine tools as well. You can get links to those classes at cricutkickoff.com. Um, tomorrow, I'll be back for lesson three, where we'll dive into Cricut Design Space on my computer, as well as an iPad and an Android tablet. So everyone's bases will be covered. I'll show you all of the important things that you can do. And then we will do a simple and fun custom project together using basic cardstock 
and the pen that came in your box. So you'll need cardstock and your Cricut pen. So until our next class, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. All right, and I remember I forgot one little thing here. So, and that is where to find all the things I'm talking about. So let me take you over to the web browser with me. All right, so here we are. I'm just in Google Chrome. And um, when you're in Cricut, I, I will, the, I've shared the link before, so you probably already know where it is, but just in case, if you go to jennifermaker.com slash Cricut kickoff, you will go to, not this page, this page. Um, so this page has my discount code for Cricut supplies and tools. So you can save 10% with my discount code. You'll note that currently it is make more, but it's gonna change at any any day now because it's almost the new year, right? So always just come back to jennifermaker.com slash Cricut discount to find my latest discount code. It is noted in your handbook. So you don't have to remember this, it's right in here so you can find it anytime. Um, so you click here and it takes you to the shop. That is my affiliate link, of course. And then if you scroll down here, you can see the links to things that I've been talking about in Cricut Kickoff. These are the funny looking but amazing magnifying glasses that I love to use. Here's that weeding ring for, you know, weeding. The one that's actually a nail polish holder, but we use for weeding. And here is a link to aluminum foil, just in case. <laughs> um, and then in lesson one, I talked about a Bluetooth adapter if you needed it, the USB extension cord, and then the Explore One adapter if you had the older Explore. So everything is there. This shopping list also goes, takes you right to Amazon, and you'll see many of these things here as well. Okay, so there's lots of links on that page. Um, so you can find them there. And also, at any time, you can always find, um, the, whenever I do a tutorial, I put the projects that we're using, the tools and supplies that we're using right in there. Let me give you an example. So here we are on my blog at jennifermaker.com. Put this away here. And uh, um, if you search for joy, which you can see I've done right here where it says looking for something, you'll find all sorts of projects. This is one on Cricut Joy Projects, seven new designs and 130 ideas, right? Uh, Cricut Joy, what materials and accessories do you really need? Another great place to look if you prefer to read, right? And so if you click on this one, super easy Cricut Joy Projects. Uh, but if you scroll down and you look for the yellow box, this one has lots of ideas in it. I always put my materials in a yellow box. It looks like this. This link at the top here will always take you right to Amazon that has each of the items listed. So you can, if you like to shop on Amazon, you can very easily shop from there. But each of these links also takes you to the individual things that we used. So there's no guessing. It's always, so we always, we like to use Amazon things because more people can get access to those than if they were at a local store. And so you can see, plus you can just go to the page and look at it. You can see the specifications and stuff. Even if you decide to buy it somewhere else, you can see the details about it. So you can go right to it. So right here, a heat resistant pressing mat, right? So you go to it and you can see what it looks like. There it is. Here's all the information about it. Here's what Amazon is selling it for. Here are the different sizes you can get for it, right? All sorts of information, very useful, right? So that's why we use Amazon. So if you ever are curious about something, what we use for a project, it's all right there at jennifermaker.com, all of it. Every project we do is documented like this.